Welcome to our series on the ideal Christian family or home. Throughout this series, we'll explore the foundational principles and practices that shape a Christian household according to biblical teachings. Join us as we delve into God's definition of family and what it means to embody a truly Christian household. Father, in Jesus' name, our God and our Father, we are in your presence begin to pray. To deliver your word to your people, Father, accept our grace in Jesus' name. That week you want your people to hear today, release it by yourself in Jesus' mighty name. Give us wisdom and understanding, and we shall live. Father, we bless your name because we have done all this. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are welcome to another time before the Lord uh, from uh, Reconciliation Ambassador of Believers Assembly. And I know that uh, the Lord has always been with you. We continue to be with you in Jesus' mighty name. Don't forget, on Wednesdays, our discussion series has been on the ideal Christian home. The ideal Christian home. And by the time we started some uh, weeks ago, we told us that uh, the family is composed of three pillars. And the three pillars are the father or the husband, the mother or the wife, and of course the children. And we went through what we qualify one to be a Christian husband and a Christian uh, mother. This time, and for the next maybe two or three parts, or even four, uh, I want us to look at the part of children as stakeholders in the home. That's what we want to look at. We want to look at uh, the part of children as stakeholders uh, in, the, in the home. Uh, what we are now going to look at is a caption, Children in Christian Homes. Children in Christian Homes. Don't forget that even the adults of today, I mean the fathers and the mothers, they were once children. And that is why God ministered to us in this ministry that uh, we must delve into the issue of children. Because the children of today that will become the father and mother of tomorrow. And whatever they have, when they are uh, children, that's part of what will make their future uh, when they get uh, older. And that's why God said we should delve into, delve into this area of the children very, very well. And I crave your understanding. Please, listen to every bit of what we have to say, just like you have been listening to the uh, past episode. I want us to listen even with more rapt attention to the issue of children in Christian uh, home, remembering that uh, the children are referred to as the future generation. That is, they are, they, are the, they are the fathers and mothers of tomorrow. And as a result, we must, uh, we must give them a sound foundation, a sound biblical surgery, a sound moral doctrine. And by the time we do all those ones, according to what the Lord has said in the scripture, then we are the, the building a glorious uh, generation. The Lord will help us to do this one in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So our anchor scripture, there are two of them that I want to quickly uh, look at. I want to look at uh, the first one. I want to look at Psalm, is a popular scripture, Psalm uh, 127. Psalm 127 and verse uh, 3. I want to look at Psalm uh, 127. We can take it, we can take uh, verses 3 to 5 to drive our point home. Uh, 127, as uh, 127, and verses 3 to 5. Verse that, that 3 says that, No, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And number 4, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty, a mighty man, so are children of uh, the youth. And uh, number 5, the last 
verse in that uh, chapter. Happy is the man that had his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' mighty name. We have heard the word of the Lord that says that uh, children are not our own as parents. We are only caretakers. We are only managing, we are only managing God's investment in our possession. So we, we cannot afford to mismanage the investment of God in our possession. And any spirit of mismanagement, even if we have been mismanaging before, as a result of this uh, series of discussion, that Lord will give us a new understanding in Jesus' mighty name. The second one, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, verses 1 to 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Number 2, uh, verse 2 rather, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Verse 3, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And verse 4, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Now, let's go into the first episode in our Children in Christian Homes. So we have told, or even from the beginning, we know the impact of the children in the home. That we cannot have the father, or, or we cannot have the man, or the woman, without expecting, without expecting that the third of the pillars in the home will soon join them. And if, after some time, the third in the pillar in the home, which are children, are not there, a lot of concerns are raised. I believe that we understand this aspect. So the family and the children. And let's see, let's see the family and the and the children. Children are referred to as a bundle of joy. That is, they are bundle of joy because they are blessing uh, from the Lord. They are blessing, and the moment they, they, they came to the family is a moment of joy. It's a joyful moment. And that's why we refer to children as bundle of joy. Then the couple, and of course, everybody, by the time the marriage is done, uh, the next thing is that, uh, uh, probably we say after nine months, we want to go and celebrate, we want to go and celebrate the birth of a new child. So, and that means that uh, just like the the father is important. The mother is important. In fact, there will not be a father nor a mother if there is no child. There will not be a father or a mother where there is no child. So it is the it is the complexion of the pillars in the home that children are. The complexion of the pillars, just like three pillars, uh, or, or, or any tripod stand. The tripod stand is what it says. It cannot stand on two legs. It can only stand with the three stand at a time. So the arrival of a child or children are always joyous uh, moment. And we pray at this time that uh, if we have any family that is expecting the bundle of joy, just like uh, what we want to start discussing, that Lord will make them glad in Jesus' mighty name. He will release the abundance of uh, this bundle of joy to their family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So it is God that gives children. It is God that, that gives children. Anytime there is delay, just like I've said earlier on, there may be concerns. Oh, is it this? Is it that? Even the husband or the wife, most of the time, the, 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 the society focuses on the woman. As if it's the wish, as if it's the problem. Or not having that uh, child. Yeah, so that is just to uh, tell us that uh, the expectation is always high on the arrival of uh, a, a child. And not forgetting that it is God that pro provides children. And God will provide children at his own time, not at the husband's own time or at the wife's own time. 
God will make everything beautiful according to his word. He make everything beautiful at his own time. At his own time. So whether we, we are anxious or not, that one will, that will not disturb God. But what we are saying in this episode is that uh, it is God that gives his own joy to us. His own bundle of joy to us at his own time. The Lord will make us glad. As many as those people that have not got that type of joy in Jesus' mighty name. One thing that is important is that our money, our fame, our position in society, even our wishes to have one cannot give us children. It is the mercy of the Lord that gives us uh, children. Because Psalm 127, verse 3, that we have just said, Lo, the children are the heritage of God. The children are the heritage of God. That is a uh, what the scripture, what the scripture uh, 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 has uh, uh, told us, now is the heritage of God. It, 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 it is, the, it, it, it is God Himself that, that that have children, and He gives to whomsoever He wants to give uh, the child to. For as many as are looking unto God, uh, it will please God to answer them, even this month, in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. What a child will be. In life, among other things, is a function of the conception. Is a function of the conception of that child. Then, um, whether some people just uh, carelessly meet with uh, their partner and they produce one funny child, and these are the type of children that is organizing the peace of the of the town, of the peace of, of, of the whole country. The Lord will deliver us as a nation in Jesus' mighty name. So. A child born out of reckless conception may grow to be an embarrassment to himself or herself, the parent, and the society at large. And that's why the father and the mother must be very, very careful. It's a serious business when the couples are going, they are going to start the journey of a new, a new child. With this are it may, the great, the, the, the great preparation must be put in place to welcome our children. What do I mean by preparation? You start by you start by the, I said the parent, the couple that is the, the, the parent, the, the, the husband and the the uh, wife. Now they have to pray, you know, to God. Even the the, the, the night they want to uh, they, they want they are thinking of conception. They have to pray to God. Even they can pray to the extent of even the sex of the child that they that they want. I said. The parent pray to God earnestly to get God's heritage. Then the couple may, if desired, ask for a specific gender and the number of the gender they want. We have had it several, several times. If it please you to give me a man child, that that's uh, the person's desire. And some people that say they want uh, trees. Some people will say they want triplets. Some people say they, 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 say they want quadruplets. Some will say, say it is a contemplate or septuplet, whatever number, you know, provided the Lord is happy about that one. He said, I, I, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and compassion on whom I will have compassion. It is not a wish, it is not your wish that, pro, that, that produced the children, just like we have said earlier on. It is the mercy of the Lord that made it happen, and the Lord will have mercy upon us. In Jesus' mighty name. So, I said the aftermath of these processes will therefore result in the arrival of a child of children. That is, when there is a coming together of uh, the the father. Of, let me not say the father now. Of the husband and the wife. <laughs> the husband and the wife. By the time they now meet in the way that the Lord uh, approves of, then there will be conception. And having carried carried this conception for the stipulated for the stipulated number of months, I, I used to say that uh, man can say whatever they want to say, but God has his own way of doing it. So man will say yes after nine months. So what what says that it cannot be it cannot be more than nine months, or it cannot be less than nine months, provided the child comes at the right time that uh, God wants that child to come. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. So, having now received the arrival of the child, oh, everybody will be joyous. And that's the reason why we say uh, the arrival of a, uh, of a child, or that child, or children, depending on the number that came, 
they are bundles of joy. Everybody, even people that have not greeted you in the past few years, where they know oh, that person delivered, oh, yeah, well, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. So these are that that's a confirmation that the, the arrival of a child is a bundle of joy. But after the after the child has arrived, or the children have arrived, depending on the number that, that the Lord uh, gives to that uh, family. Then the next thing is uh, what we call covenant naming. Naming a child, usually after eight days of birth, is not a ceremony per se. It's not a ceremony per se, but a covenant practice. And consequently, the reason uh, the occasion is called Covenant naming. It's not. It's not just. It's not just uh, a ceremony. It's a covenant assignment. You know, it's a covenant assignment, which did not even exclude our Lord Jesus Christ. Name is symbolical. Name is symbolical. Uh, most often than not, we behave our names. We behave our names. I I believe the elderly ones among us will understand what I mean by by behaving our name. When we have had certain names before, we say, oh, when we say so, 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 I don't want to mention any name now so that it won't be I'm attacking or favoring some, some people. Hey, when you say, hey, they say ah, or when you say, when, when you hear another, like, hey, thank God. Which means there is life in the name that uh, we give to our children. And as a result, we must be able to, just like we pray to God to give us the child or the children, then we have to pray to God for the name that we are to uh, we are to give to uh, such children, because the children live uh, and behave their name. They behave their name. When somebody, when somebody says, uh, when for, uh, for example, when you look at the story of that person, it means all the time, all the time. Then God will be intervening, intervening, intervening. That means that uh, that is a covenant name. But when you bear a name that is contrary to what you, what, what you have, there is something that is fundamentally wrong with that name. The Lord will give us even understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. I've said that name is symbolical. That uh, most often than not, in fact, we behave uh, and ask and live our name. We explain the true meaning of our name. The real meaning of a name at times owns the bearer. What I'm saying here is that when you are talking of certain names, the name, the mean, the true meaning of that name owns that bearer. By the time we get to the appropriate place, we will know what happened to Jabesh. Jabesh committed no sin of his own, but because of the circumstances surrounding is bad. The mother just gave her just any any name. And the, the name stick on the uh, on the boy then becoming uh, uh, growing to become a man. So that is what, what, what I mean by, by saying that uh, the name at times may haunt the bearer of that name. Then therefore what is what is in the name? Let's know what is in the name. I've said earlier on that we may we may take about five parts, you know, five sessions in this part to be able to conclude this uh, issue of the children because of the important role they play in the family and in the society at large. What is in the name? Some people are still they still operating under the fear that uh, a name is a name, and I we. To tell you with all humility that a, a name is not name. That is, a name must corroborate something good for you, for something good to happen to you. A name must corroborate something good, or it, 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 it may carry something that is a pleasant before you can enjoy uh, peace. There are some names that we have had in this country that I believe no one will wish to name, uh, to, to give to his child or uh, or a child. Let's leave that one till another another time. So, what a child will be in life is likely a function of the name 
he or she answers. Also, the parent must actually understand the meaning of, of names to be given to their children so they will not be inflicting causes on their children just by the name given to them. These are, these are what we have to know. I've mentioned the issue of uh, uh, Jabesh. We have that account in the, the book of uh, First Chronicles. Uh, First Chronicles chapter, chapter 4. First Chronicles uh, chapter 4. When we start from chapter 9. And Jabesh was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabesh. Saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my cause, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he prepared. I usually like to put verse 10 before verse 9. Because uh, it is after God has answered him that we need to know that Jabez was more honorable than his uh, brethren. He was not honor he was not honorable before the intervention of God. But after the intervention of God, then he now became honorable. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Let's look at a few cases that is relevant to our uh, teaching here. Okay, for, for example, I said, we have series of cases in the Bible and also in the contemporary world that until their names were, uh, 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 until, until the, this, the names of some people are, are changed, then things will be working in opposite direction for them. Maybe because of our time, let, just, let me just mention a few of them. We have the popular account of uh, Jacob. Jacob popularly referred to uh, by the biblical scholar, anyway, the supplanter, a schemer, a trisker, a, a, swind a swindler. The name had to be changed to Israel so that his fortune can be restored. We have that account in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 24 to 28, where Jacob wrestled with an uh, angel, or wrestled with God. And uh, when he, he would not allow the angel to go, then, uh, okay, who are you? My name, I mean, my name is Jacob. Let me no longer be Jacob. Then we now become Israel. We have a, cases like that. If the name, when we look at the account of uh, uh, Jacob, we see that so many things are wrong with him. So many things are wrong with him. But until there's a name change, then everything now to change. Of course, our father in the faith and friend of God, uh, 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 Abraham, the, the first name he bear was uh, Abraham. Abraham, man of one, one nation. Now, God promised him that he would be a father of many nations. So, if the name did not change from Abraham, then he, would, he wouldn't have been father of many nations. So, the name had to be changed to Abraham before the promise of God can be fulfilled in his life. The same thing with the wife. The wife was Sarah before, then the name had to be changed to uh, Sarah. And of course, our popular apostle, we know of uh, Saul the persecutor, now becoming Paul the apostle. You know, Saul the persecutor, now becoming Paul the apostle. You can see that there are, there are correlation in what, in what name that we, sh we should give to our children. And the required understanding that Lord will release unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Just like we are looking at those people that were changed. There was a, there was a name that was not changed, among other uh, stories in the Bible. And the meaning of that name killed that particular person. And we are talking in, uh, in the area of, uh, in the area of uh, Nabal. Nabal in the Bible. We have that account in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verses 4 to 9, verses 12 to 13, verses 32 to 38. And that's why the fact that uh, uh, Rabbi was very rich, very influential, but the, 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 sp the stupidity that he went to at the end, close to the end of his time, finally led to his uh, uh, stupid end. Not minding... You know, Abigail, 
His wife had to, had, had to make a plea to David at a particular time. And uh, for the sake of Abigail, uh, the, the problem that will have arisen on neighbor was, uh, was virtually uh, uh, removed. But because of the fact that that person, that person is still happening under the influence of his name, he still committed some other fl 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 uh, blunder. That's why I beg of you, read those uh, first portion. First Samuel chapter 25, 4 to 9, chapter 25, 12 to 13, verses 32 to 38. That, that, those verses capture what actually ended the, 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 the life of Nebel. Nebel was popularly referred to as a foolishness or foolish. Then, and everything that he, that he did, even though it was rich, it was influential, at the end of the day, it was that folly that, 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 killed him, that, that killed him. And that one is not to tell us that we cannot mock God. Whatever God has said is sacrosanct, it will come to play. So the Lord will give us even understanding in Jesus' mighty name. We have cases of other names. We have cases of other names. We have seen Abraham, Abraham and Abraham. We have seen Sarah and Sarah. That God, Jacob and Israel, we have, we have had. Hosea and Joshua is there. Number chapter 13, verse 16. Then Solomon to, to Jedediah. Then that second Samuel chapter 12, 24 to 25. Then, then uh, we have Naomi. Say to Mara, we call it Naomi. What? Forget about the pronunciation there. Naomi changing to Mara. Ruth chapter 1. Verse 20. Then we still have all other cases there. So I believe that uh, now that we have heard all this, even if we bear a name that we know that is haunting us or we think might be haunting us, then let's pray to God for the direction. The Lord will give us the direction that we must find something to do about that uh, name. Uh, if your name has been a reason for your challenge or travail in life, you may wish to have a rethink in favor of a name change. I'm not saying you go and change your name, but you may need to you may need to review you may need to review uh, your name, and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Father in heaven, we bless your name because you have released your word again in another dimension to your people. Accept our praise in Jesus' mighty name. Our God and our Father, we bless your name that you have allowed us to speak that which you want us to speak, and your people have received it. Bless them your name in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, eternal rock of ages, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Well, I know that uh, this is an area that is very, very important for us. If there is anybody that has fallen Victim, either either you have been a, a, a victim of you know of, of, of bad name or wrong name, it is an opportunity for you to place your right hand on your chair, and that any any negativity that the, the name that the name you bear has brought to you, the Lord will remove it in the name of Jesus. Father, I come to you today, and I've heard your word. Any area, and in fact all areas. That, that my name has worked negatively against me. Redeem me, O Lord. Give me a new name, and your name shall be prayed forevermore. Father, we bless your name, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And finally, before we go, let us listen to this uh, announcement. We know that uh, people have been following us all this while since uh, we started almost a year ago. And we know that uh, you may have uh, maybe one, one testimony or the other, maybe of the word of uh, what the, the, the Lord has done in your life. We want to create, and we have even created that, uh, that uh, platform already, but people have not been using that platform. We are now saying that as many I want to make uh, some contribution to what we are doing, we have our regular, regular uh, email line that is uh, flashed already. 
on, on this uh, like uh, already on this uh, platform that reconciliation ambassadors at gmail.com and uh, there is another one that we see find at the at the bottom of that one so if you have a testimony and i believe you have testimonies if you have testimony please send your testimony to the uh, appropriate appropriate uh, email message and your testimony can be I mean, uh, your testimonies will be acknowledged and we pray that and bless the lord on your on, on, on your behalf and if god has done something for you the cause of listening to this uh, word this series of word oh why not let us know so that you can, you can read your testimony and it can enlighten the heart of other people and the other people too can benefit because we know that uh, testimony give back to one another. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless your name once again. And as we go, go with us in Jesus' mighty name. Let the mighty hand of the Lord be upon us. We come against any evil, against any one of us in Jesus' mighty name. No evil shall be recorded. No premature death has been recorded. Your name shall be magnified forevermore. For in Jesus' eternal name, we are praying. Amen.